What's up, Meffers? It's no secret that some of the best finesse techniques of all time have come from Japan. The drop shot, the Nico rig, fish catchers around the world. Today's video, we're gonna be going over the newest rig, which might not look like much right here, but it might be the most lifelike way that we have ever rigged soft plastic worms. We're gonna go over the best worms for this application, how to rig it, some underwater footage of what this thing actually does in the water. And stay tuned till the end. I'm gonna show you a couple ways that I think are gonna catch way more fish and make this rig much more fishable for our waters in the United States. So at the time of making this video, I've seen several other influencers make videos about this rig, including some of the originators of it over in Japan. But I haven't seen very many with really good underwater footage or really talking about some modifications to make this rig a lot more fishable for a lot of the waters I think you're gonna see on more of a daily basis than the ultra pressured, ultra clear water where this technique originated. When these techniques come over to the United States and different parts of the world from Japan, there's usually some tweaks that are gonna help us catch more fish and waters that are a little more familiar with us. I'm gonna show you how to rig it really quick and then we're gonna take it to the pool and show the underwater action. So here's all you're gonna need to rig this. It's actually very cheap and very simple to rig, I have either a six cents drop shot hook right here, or this one is, I think a gamakatsu hook that is a weedless version. So you can go weedless if you're gonna be fishing around, obviously grass or brush, or if you're gonna be fishing next to some spawning areas um, on some sand, some rock piles, stuff like that. A traditional open hook drop shot hook will be absolutely perfect for this. You're also going to need some, some type of tubing to go through the worm. And a lot of people go out and try to find the perfect size of rubber tubing or whatever from the uh, grocery store. I found that this is the cheapest and easiest way. Go to the gas station, steal you some coffee stir straws. They're free at that point. If you wanna buy them, they're like a dollar for a hundred. So you could also do that, I suppose. You're gonna need a worm of your choice. This one right here, the six cents divine in the seven inch. So a little bit bigger size. Um, is perfect for this technique because it's got some sink to it, comes in great colors, and it's just flat out a fish catcher. You guys have seen that. And then this is the key to this entire rig at the end is this little split ring. You can use it, any type of split ring. Really the most important thing is the split ring has to be bigger than the size of the hole on your straw, which is the majority of split rings. You're not gonna find many that much smaller, but at the same time, I like to find about the smallest one as possible. This is a finesse light line technique and uh, you're not gonna want giant terminal tackle, whether it's hooks or this split ring to be too big. Another thing that's gonna help a lot is some super glue to hold it all together and of course, some scissors to uh, cut the straws. Let's get to rigging. So you're gonna take your worm and I don't like to have a super, super soft worm for this. Otherwise, it, it's gonna have a propensity to not wanna straighten out on its own anyway. So I think for the fishability and the visual of this technique, it's good to have a more rigid, um, less super soft worm for this technique. Again, that's why this one's perfect. We're gonna start with the big end of the worm. So you got your bigger, more bulbous end, and of course your tail end, your traditional tail end of this worm or any worm you'd like to use. We're gonna make this a little bit sharper. So we're gonna cut this straw at an angle. Cole, come over here, I wanna stab you with it, show you how sharp this thing is. That thing's sharp, it goes right through that worm. So we're gonna take our big end of the worm, we're gonna go about an inch down. This is a seven inch worm, so it's gonna vary. You're gonna go less than if it's only a four or five inch worm, but we'll go about an inch down on our seven inch worm, and then we're gonna hit it at an angle. We're gonna angle it back towards the smaller end of the worm, probably 30 to 45 degrees. So we're gonna stab him directly through the middle of the worm and it's important that we keep the worm lined up so you're not going through here and you're not going through here and then on the back side of the worm, you wanna keep it all in a line. So we're gonna double this worm over so he's like that and we're gonna go back through again at an angle, the opposite angle. So we're gonna go this time through the middle of the worm. So now we're through the worm twice and then we got one more step to go. You guys probably guessed it. We're going back through at that same angle. Or really you can straighten this one out a little bit. The angle is not so important here because you're just tying to the split ring. You want your split ring flush with your worm regardless. So here is what we are left with. And you can probably get away with using one straw for two baits. Again, they're ultra cheap so it don't really matter. But 
that's what we got. So one way we can secure this a little bit better, and I know it seems like this rigging takes forever, but it's really not that bad once you get used to doing it. You can do one rig and probably about the time it takes to do a Nico, maybe a little bit longer, but take our little dab of super glue and we're just gonna take a dab. We'll do it right against the worm on the top end of all three of these spots where it goes through. And very simply, boom, slide it up, slide it up, slide it up. It's probably already dried here in a second. We're gonna cut the excess. You guys see how quick that process is? Now it's time for the riggings. Now we're gonna take our line. This is six pound test. I think you could use up to 10, but I think six or eight is gonna work great for this finesse technique. Super glue scissors. So the first thing we're gonna do is put the hook on, and this is strange. You don't do this on any other rigging method that I know of anyways. So you're gonna put your hook through. Let's put this little six cents hook through here. You're gonna go through the top side of the hook just like you would when you go through on a drop shot to tie your Palomar knot. And that's it. We're going to leave it. We're not going to tie a knot to that or nothing. We'll get back to him at the end of this rigging method. Next, we're going to go through the same order as we put our straw through in those same spots. So we're going to go through that top one from the top down at that angle. If it helps you for the visual, we're going to bend that worm back over the same direction. So he's going through like that. We're going to bend him over. I can't see because I'm trying to be on camera and can see it. So we're through our worm two times. Again, we want to keep it all straight and we're going to go through this tail portion. We fold them up over it and we go back through the tail. Yahtzee. Last thing we're going to do, we're going to tie our favorite knot. I'm going to tie a uh, San Diego jam knot to the little tiny split ring. And of course, as with all split rings you tie onto, you don't want your line to go in the little gap of the split ring because you're using light line already and that will F up your line. So there we have our worm and we have one more step until we're done and we take it to the pool and look at it underwater and I show you a couple modifications that I think are gonna help you catch some more fish on it and fish a little bit better. We're gonna take our drop shot hook and we're gonna go just to the small end side of the first hole we're in, and we're just gonna take a little bite out of it, probably. I mean, you want it to sit with the eye of that hook right on that first straw hole. So we're gonna look at where that would go through on the worm, depending on how big your hook is or what hook you're using. We're just gonna take a little bite out of the worm, probably go a quarter way through it is all, and then we're gonna slide that hook through and so we're all flush, that's gonna be important. And what you're left with is this action right here, which I don't know if that's gonna trigger more bites than any methods, but Cole, stop smiling back there. Jesus, you're bugging me. <laughs> but it's gonna give the fish a different look and sometimes that's super important is to give them a different look. Look at that thing, it's a live worm, Cole! Okay, time to take this bait and this technique and put it underwater and show you what this thing actually looks like in the water. Now, I've, I've rigged it a few different ways. This is completely weightless as we just showed you. As you can see, this worm sinks super, super slow in the water column. But when you twitch it, it gives it that super lifelike, scrunched up look. And once again, like I was saying, it's not necessarily a better action than a wacky rig or a flick shake or a Nico rig or a weightless Senko or something like that, but it's different. It's gonna give these fish a different look, whether it be good or bad, than they've ever seen before. And for those of you watching, how many of you guys have thrown a wacky rig in your life? Okay, how many of your buddies throw it? All right, so every single one of you has thrown a wacky rig in your life or a weightless stickworm. That means every bass has probably seen 700,000 of them too. Being different is generally a good thing. So you can see underwater how lifelike this presentation, I guess, looks. I mean, I don't think bass eat a whole lot of night crawlers in the water, which this kind of simulates, I guess. 
but I think it's important to have a worm like this one that doesn't sink super quick and doesn't float. This obviously wouldn't work too well on a floating worm, or maybe it would and we just haven't used it before. So the problem I'm seeing with this bait as it's rigged right now is you're gonna have to fish it extremely slow and methodically if you're gonna wanna fish this bait close to the bottom at all. Obviously fish suspend, and if you're not fishing deep water, um, like this pool right here, which is only two and a half to three and a half feet deep, probably two and a half feet deep, it's only gonna take you probably a foot every two seconds to get to the bottom. But for me, that doesn't make this rig very fishable, especially if I'm in 10, 15, 20, 40 feet of water it's not a rig that I'm gonna turn to. I'm gonna throw a drop shot or a Ned rig or even a Nico rig with a heavy weight in the tail to get this down there. So let me show you guys two different rigging methods if you want this rig to be so much more fishable, especially at deeper depths. So the first method I'm gonna modify this Inu rig with is kind of making it a Nico rig with a nail weight in the tail. So we're gonna take our weight and we're simply gonna shove it in the tail just like we would if we were tail weighting a Nico rig or like a tail weighted Senko or stick worm or something like that. And the cool thing about that is it's not going to affect the action of the bait in any way since the pull point is on this split ring and it's still gonna have this slinky type action. But let me show you underwater how it's gonna make this bait so much more fishable, especially at deeper depths. So watch as I throw this in the water, how much faster this worm sinks. And when it hits, it's gonna sit upright for a second, just like uh, a Ned rig or a Nico rig would. And when you pull it and you pop it up, it still has that awesome slinky style action, but it gets right back down to the bottom. So not only are you working this bait horizontally through the water column, but you're coming horizontally and dropping it down to the bottom. So you're covering the vertical water column, the bottom two feet of the lake a lot as well, or you can work it three or four feet up. I've caught a ton of fish on a Nico rig. And like I was saying, this thing seems like it takes a lot and has a lot of hardware. It takes a long time to rig, but it really doesn't take that much longer than digging through your tackle box and finding your, your O-rings and finding your super glue for that nail weight, finding your nail weights at the right size shoving it in the back of that worm and everything. It doesn't take that much longer to rig than your traditional Nico rig. I'm gonna fish this bait in the exact same places. I'm gonna fish it in rock piles, points, ledges. This is gonna be a nice mop up bait or a bait when the fish just flat out don't want to eat or they've seen a million Nico rigs or wacky rigs or weightless rigs thrown at them, this is gonna give them a different look than they've seen before. So the second modification I'm gonna make with this rig is to make it a finesse Carolina rig. We're gonna take the tail weight out of the tail and have it rigged it's weightless, just like we did from the start, except we're gonna slide a one quarter or three sixteenth ounce bullet weight, and we're gonna put it about 18 inches up above that worm. So we're gonna put the bullet weight on our line, just like Carolina rig, we don't need all the hardware of the swivel and everything. That's not necessary. As long as you got these six cents peg stoppers, which even on this really small six or eight pound test line, they're gonna hold on there tightly. They're the tightest, grabbiest, I guess is the, the word for it, um, peg stoppers I've seen on the market. And it's gonna stop that weight. You want it free swinging up here, but you want it to stop. And you can adjust that obviously too, if you want it to be closer to your worm. And then we're just gonna rig it exactly like we did from the start, through the hook, through the worm three times, and onto the split ring. So here is the finished Finesse Carolina rig. Let's look at it in the water. So we throw it down, we're gonna cast it, and this is gonna be one we fish, you know, over a long point, we're gonna fish on a rock pile, a hard, just a channel swing, a hard spot on the bottom, anything. That worm's gonna fall super slow and seductively back behind that weight. And as we kind of drag it along the bottom, I think the most effective thing to do would be to just work a few twitches in, like so. And as you can see, that Carolina rig weight is gonna keep this bait on the bottom. So this is a totally different presentation than these fish have seen. They've seen a million Carolina rigs with ring fries or French fries or lizards come by them and that bait's just flat on the bottom. 
they've never seen something that works on the bottom quite like that, that scrunches up and has that secondary motion of the, the bait folding over on itself. So that there is the Inu rig. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of this rig. If you think it'll be a bust or you think it'll be a great way to catch more fish and what modifications you think that should be made to this bait. If you guys wanna watch another underwater tank video, we got an exciting one coming. We're actually in the process of filming a video with all these different glide baits right here. And we're gonna show the differences in action to a $1,000 bait and a $20 bait, and which one you need to go check out and what works best for which situation for those of you guys that are interested about glide baits. Thanks for watching this one, Mappers. Catch you next time. Out of here. Peace.